everyone, welcome to the studio. It's demo day and we have another video demo in store for you today. And as promised, I'm going to share with you another tip for helping you paint complicated subjects or subject matter that you might not normally approach because it seems daunting. It may, it may have a lot of detail, uh, it may need to be more precise, uh, and in the beginning of the month I shared a uh, demo with you in which I made the, f the reference photo blurry and then we started the painting by blocking in those big simple shapes uh, and then we gradually added detail. That was a really good way of helping to um, start a painting that is a more complex subject. This is another method and I'm sure you've used it before or maybe you've had it in another class or workshop and it's <clears throat> the very simple but effective way of what is called upside down painting. And so what we'll do is we'll take our reference photo and we'll start the painting with the photo upside down and then we will like put in the, the first layers or block it in and, and when everything is blocked in we'll turn the photo right side up. Now, how does this work? Why does this work? Well, what it does is it takes the information that your brain know, uh, it knows and it um, kind of cuts the circuit. Mm, let me explain. When you are looking at, at a, an object, let's say um, a, a structure, a building, a little house, and that's what we're going to paint today. You, you look at it and you say, oh, there's a little house, it's got a pointed roof, it's got some dark windows, right? And you're, st and you're labeling things. When you start labeling things, your brain goes in this mode where it tries to help you out and your brain will say, oh, okay, you're trying to paint a little house and it has some windows and I can help you with that. I have shortcuts for that. And our brain develops these shortcuts so that we can process the, the uh, huge amount of information that we're faced with uh, every second. And so we need these shortcuts, o otherwise we, we wouldn't be able to function, we'd be overwhelmed. But this, these shortcuts get in our way when we're trying to paint because the shortcuts are just that, they're shortcuts and they are not exactly what we see or observe. Uh, for an example, and I've shared this before, I've um, had you guys Close your eyes and imagine painting a daisy. And, and uh, what happens for mo most of us is that we come up with the symbol for a daisy. That perfect yellow center with those perfect white petals arranged neatly around the center and a line and two green leaves, right? Th this is normal. That's the shortcut that our brain has for a daisy. But so you can understand where I'm going with this. If we really observe that daisy, very rarely are they perfect. The petals are going to have different colors depending on the light. Uh, they're not always perfect. There may be some missing. They could be ragged. There's texture in that center. There may be different foliage. But we tend to use these symbols. And a lot of times people are like, or oh, are we t tell me. Oh, Karen, it looks like my paintings uh, are done by a child. And normally this is because your brain is reverting to symbols that you have established instead of really truly observing carefully uh, and removing the labels. Because the minute you give a label, then the brain kicks in and says, I can help you, I've got a shortcut for that. And the shortcuts are rarely as interesting as the actual object, that if we would observe it carefully. So what does all this have to do with upside down painting? When you turn your image, your reference photo, upside down, your brain no longer sees that actual object. And instead, all we see are shapes and colors and values and we can no longer label it because it's upside down. And here's the, the, the key. Don't try to study your upside down image and try to label what you see. Just look at it as a simple collection of shapes and values and color. And when you do that, your brain is short-circuited and you are being more a careful observer rather than allowing the brain to jump in with the symbol which I said earlier is rarely as interesting as the actual object. So, with all that said, let's come closer to the easel and I'll show you what we're going to be working on today. And I'm actually going to be add, uh, painting another structure. Surprise, surprise! I haven't painted a lot of structures, but we did the boardwalk scene earlier in this month. And this is 
Another reference photo that I've had in my pile for a long time, and again, it's felt as though it was daunting. There's too much information. Um, I should probably... Well, it's upside down, so you may not even be able to, to tell what it is, but let's just take a second and look at it right side up. I should have done that first. Okay, here it is right side up. So we have this really interesting shack in the shadow and light and, and surrounded by a field of sunflowers and some interesting trees. This was a scene in uh, middle Georgia and in a sunflower where you, you pick sunflowers. Really cool place. I've had this photo for a long time, but I, have, I don't really paint very many structures, so I haven't really tackled it. But... I thought that it would be a good candidate for an upside down painting because I can then look at these things as just a collection of shapes and values and, and color uh, and that will help me hopefully uh, make more sense of it and make it easier or less daunting to tackle. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I, I'm going to just do a very quick drawing of those simple shapes. And I decided to work on black uh, paper. This is you are dark. Um, let me tell you what grit it is. 600 uh, grit. Just on the smoother side. But I'm selecting the black paper because I think it might really lend itself to this subject and to really capture the drama of the light and the shadow and maybe help make the the yellow sunflowers really pop. Um, the, pa the pastels that I'm going to be using are, I'm going to be using my floral landscape set and I'll share pictures of the, the pastels that I actually end up using. But I'm also going to be using some hard pastels, some new pastels. And I want to share this set with you. This is a Prismacolor new pastel set of 24. Um, and I want to share this with you because next month, the month of July, I'm going to actually be working with this set. And this that the, you can get, I think it's 92 or 94 uh, set of new pastels. This is one of the less expensive, smaller sets. But I'm going to be using this set next month uh, to do uh, some demos and use them in my demos. So if you're if you do not have new pastels, and I urge everyone to have some harder pastels in your collection, you might want to go ahead and um, get a hold of some because I'll be using them next month. I'm going to put a link to all of this in in the description of our demo. Oops. All right. So I'm going to use a pastel pencil, um, kind of an ochre color, to do my initial drawing. And that's simply so that you guys can see the drawing. Uh, if I were to work with a pencil on this dark paper, you wouldn't really see it. Um, so I want to work on the... I'm going to use a lighter color just so that you guys can see it. Alright, so the, I have to remind myself that I'm not going to label things, right? It's just I'm going to say what color, what shape, what value when I start to block it in. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the horizon, which we, obviously we're upside down, but we're going to have the, this be the field and then the building <coughs> um, on the lower half. And then I'm going to make a note of where I want the top of the building to triangle. end. What? It's a triangle, not a building. Oh, yeah, you know... <laughs> That's really hard. I, I, <laughs> I'm reminded that I'm not supposed to label things. It's a triangle shape. Where do I want that end of the triangle shape? That way I can figure out how large I'm going to make thing, the, the, the structure. I can call it a structure. And I think I want it to end about here because I want to have some space on the edge of the painting to put this tree. Uh, so with that, we know that this is going to be the top of that triangle shape. Now I want to get the right angle. Now you've seen me do this before. I'm just taking a stick and I'm uh, um, lining it up with the angle and then I'll, I'll, I'll drag it over to my paper and this is going to be, oops, probably could have just left it there. That's going to be the, the angle and then it, it comes across here and then let's check this angle and then just bring it over and that goes like this. I'm, again, just like as with the boardwalk painting earlier this month, I don't have to be 
I do not have to be perfect with these things. Oops, let's check this angle. And I'll just move it over here. You could probably eyeball these things too if you if you feel comfortable with that. Then we have this part here and this part here. I don't really need to worry about the window shapes and the things that I see, the different shapes inside right here. I'll uh, add that on. Then we have, I'm going to use my pencil instead of the stick because it's a little bit easier. It's in the same hand. We have this little thing sticking off the structure. Let's see, let's get this right. So you can see that this, these kind of paintings take a little bit longer. Now we have a green shape here, which is some foliage. And then it looks like there's a little, another little structure right in here. I may or may not add this other structure, but I'll just put that shape in there. There's a chimney shape. That's a sh uh, I just labeled it, but it's all right. Like a smaller little rectangle. And always you want to compare. So like you can look and say, oh, okay, that shape there comes a, a little bit higher than the roof. So I'll make it a little bit higher than the roof. And then we have this tree shape. I, I, it's hard to tell in the photo, but it, I don't want the tree to end up right at the edge of the building. And then we have another tree shape on this. And this this here is important. I don't want a half of a tree. I can have half or more of a tree, but if it's half or less, it will look um, awkward. So I just moved it over just a little bit so I can have a little bit more than half. Um, and then what's going on over here? It looks like there's a little bit of distant foliage and then we have our flowers and I'm going to just call them flowers that's what they are I'm only going to note where the largest ones are this is something that I can easily arrange when I turn the painting right side up remember when you have a field of flowers you want to have a nice arrangement that helps lead the viewer into the painting and this is the corner of the building alright so now <laughs> This looks really strange. Hopefully it's going to be, um, and a lot of times what I'll end up doing is just flip my board around, but then it'll be too low for you guys to see. So I'm actually going to flip the whole thing around. All right, so I'm going to flip this around and I'll be right. All right, I'm back and we're still upside down. And I went through the, the, the uh, motions and I turned it right side up and I realized it probably would be better if I blocked in the painting, in other words, add a full layer of pastel before I turn it right side up. In other words, keep it upside down and um, unnamed for as long as I can. And so I decided and I, uh, that I'm going to keep it upside down until I have one full layer of pastel. So I'm going to block in using a, my collection of hard pastels. I have not selected the colors in advance, but I will make a little color swatch uh, sheet so that you can see which colors I end up using. I'll just put them here. So I'm going to first um, block in all the dark shapes. And I, I am going to um, not worry about any detail that I may see. Because remember, we have been working from uh, out of focus photos where we are not really noticing detail. And so, this photo, while it is upside down, it is not out of focus. So I can still see the detail, but I don't want to be um, influenced by the detail. Whoa. Uh, I, I really want to keep my shapes simple uh, for as long as I can. We've got this tree, is also dark. We've got the shadow area. Um, there's some shadow on the roof there, that triangle shape and the chimney shape, and there's some stuff down in here, and we have some dark shapes in the sunflowers. Um, these, I don't know if you uh, noticed, but these sunflowers are 
facing the building so the they are actually you know they face the sun so the sun is behind the bill the behind the building but then it, it's probably off to the side well the sun must be here over here because that's where the sunflowers are looking so that's kind of tricky I also <clears throat> made a dark shape going through this uh, grassy area and remember we want to establish a nice uh, suggested pathway. What did we call that last month? Foundation pathway. Alright, so those are the dark areas. Now, where are the light areas? The light area is going to be the sky and uh, in my photo the sky is overexposed but I want to make it a blue sky since it's a sunny day so I'm going to just come in with a little bit of light blue I'll make the sky a little bit more uh, interesting once I start in with the softer pest remember this is just the initial block in we also have uh, a little bit of distant foliage or a mountain shape right in there so I'll put that in there right now on this side this shape I also like this color I think for this um, outbuilding shape all right what about the roof we have half the roof is in shadow and I'm going to use this uh, kind of gray down blue I think is a good color for this area and then we have part of it in sunlight. <clears throat> I think I'm going to use this. It's kind of a rusty color, orangey. I'm going to make it a little bit darker than I think it is. Or because I can always adjust. Remember in the underpainting or the block in stage, a lot of times it's helpful to make things uh, more intense. <clears throat> then you want them to end up because uh, you can always make things lighter, make things um, duller, make things less detailed. Oh, less detailed, does that make sense? Lighter, lighten them, dull them out, tone them down. There's that shape right there. I'm going to add you can see a little peak of the sky in this area. I'm going to add this pale pink to the base of the sky, to the horizon. Alright, what is left? We have the yellow of our sunflowers. And I'm going to go ahead with the local color of the mm, sunflowers. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll need to work on these some more, but this is just to get me going in the right direction. And I'm only putting in the main flowers, the biggest flowers. Remember, I have this thing that I call um, bigger than an inch rule. So if, if a shape is larger than an inch in my, in my scene, uh, then I will leave room for it. Um, if it's smaller than an inch, then um, I, I don't need to lay, leave room for it. I can put it on top of the layers. I'm going to put in some of this rusty color that I added to the roof because <clears throat> this is going to be the Georgia clay. Underneath these sunflowers is nice, rich Georgia clay. It's this orangey red color. All right, And I will add green on top of that as the painting progresses. But in the beginning stages, if I put this color here, it not only gives this more interest, because I'm going to put green on top of it, but it relates to the colors that are up in the building. All right, So, that is our initial block in, very big, simple shape. Still, if you didn't know what you were painting, if you hadn't seen the photo right side up and you didn't study it, so I don't want you to study it, you might say, that's an odd collection of shapes. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at it and I want you to say, are these shapes interesting? Are they varied? 
you know, you don't want everything to look the same. Is there interesting positive shapes and interesting negative space that surrounds the objects? Uh, because if there's, if it's not, you have the ability to make adjustments to your, um, I'm going to just put in this green because this was some green stuff right in there while I was thinking about that. All right, you can make adjustments in this early stage. It's a lot harder to make adjustments and you get further along in the painting. All right, now I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to turn it right side up. All right, here we are. Now we are back right side up. And uh, from the upside down version, you can see, actually, we can start to call things what they are. I know uh, Michael's reminding me that I keep calling them what they are and I'm telling you not to label things but I'm labeling things. It's a really really hard habit to break. That's just it's a natural thing we want to do. So do your best. I, I understand if it gets really hard. Um, and I may end up labeling things just so that you know what I'm trying to say or paint. Alright so now that we have everything blocked in we can uh, move on to the softer pastels and we can start to refine these shapes. Now everything is sort of blurry and out of focus but we can have a pretty good idea of what's happening. Uh, so what I always do when I move on to softer pastels is I reinforce the dark areas. Now as I reinforce the dark areas this is going to give me the opportunity to refine some of these shapes. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to come in with another dark blue. It's interesting because I'm working on black paper that this dark blue that I'm using normally come, reads as quite dark, but because I'm working on dark or black paper, it doesn't, it does not um, look quite as dark. That's simultaneous contrast at work. I talk about that a lot. All right, so we blocked in the dark of the shadowed area on the building, and there's dark on the shadows on the roof from the tree. Now this tree, now that I can see it uh, right side up, has a little bit more um, involved um, trunks than I actually established, and it's much more interesting. So I'm going to just put in some dark trunks with this dark blue and the same with this guy over here. A little bit more involved than we could see in the upside down version. So I'll just make it a little bit more interesting. Add a little dark. And where else is there dark? Okay, well we have that dark suggested pathway foundation pathway so we'll add the dark blue to it and I think that's good but I, as you know I like to have more than one layer of dark so I'm going to take a dark violet and add some of that in my dark areas very light layer of a dark violet Let's put it in the on the ground as well um, and then I'm going to jump into some dark green for the trees. So we have a dark warmer green over here on the left side of the tree because it's getting some sunlight. This tree seems to be in shadow more so I'm going to use a dark cooler or blue green really not so much about the trees so I'm not really going to I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time getting them too uh, too perfect. Now I'm going to take my dark Terry Ludwig eggplant and anywhere that I see that is super, I call it super dark, any, uh, much darker than any surrounding area such as the shadow underneath the roof but we don't want it to be a worm so I'm going to pull it down slightly. This um, the corner of the building and the right side of the building is much darker than anywhere else. Um, 
right here at the base of this building where the flowers come up and there's a little door or window shape on the side so I'll use the dark for that. That could be a little bit better. It's also super dark underneath the roof of this uh, shed area. Where else is it super dark? I'm going to add a little bit of that super dark right at the base, at the foreground. And a little bit on the tree trunk. So by reserving this super dark eggplant pastel for what I call the accents, then they really actually stand out and they are more, much more, they're much stronger than if I made that all of the dark areas that same dark. So a lot of times we end up with um, getting really excited when we have a, that nice super dark uh, pastel, but um, that needs to be a little bit darker. Then we, we it's e very easy to abuse it and then it loses its impact. Alright, I'm going to paint the the shadow side of the roof with a kind of grayed down blue and I'll add some of that to the shadows. Those probably could be a little darker. Do you know the painting is is basically solving a collection of problems? You are faced with these different um, situations and as you paint you just have to you you have to try to work them out what colors do I see what values do I see uh, what is the direction of these shapes alright so I'm not going to spend any more time on the roof right now because what I want to do is paint the sky remember the sky sets the mood sets the tone so I'm going to take a quick spray of my workable fixative, spray all these dark areas. Let it dry for just a second. And by the way, I'm using the Blair Very Low Odor Workable Fixative. Um, I, and I'm spraying the trees just so that, one, I can get a little more texture when I start adding a little more of the green foliage. And two, so that uh, when I come in closer with the sky color, I don't get it too... Uh, dirty. I, I really like this kind of, um, I'm going to give it more of a pinky glow um, where it, kind of a, a haze because I remember that even though this was a long time ago, several years ago, I remember it being just, oh my goodness was it hot and humid. Typical Georgia summer day. Um, and so to get that humid, hazy feeling, I'm going to just give it a warm glow at the horizon. Before I do that, I'm just adding a, a light oops, blue. And I can use that uh, blue to kind of carve into the roof. a little bit better. I'm, I'm adding the sky holes uh, by carving into the tree and I, I'm making the sky holes go along where the where the main branches are uh, and it looks weird uh, because I don't have enough foliage in there yet so it looks kind of um, too spotty right now but with sky holes, you have to put them in and then you can refine them. All right, let's give it the glow. Now, I'm tempted to add a, p a, a, a pink glow, but I am going to add a pale yellow glow instead. And the reason why is I think it feels warmer and hotter. Um, this is that weird outbuilding shape. And also by having a pale yellow in the sky, it relates better to the yellow in the flowers. So I'm just going over, pulling that pale yellow up higher into the sky just to give it that kind of humid, 
hot, humid feeling. All right, let's. I really like the color of the hard pastel for these distant trees, so I'm going to keep it. And you know, um, one thing about in the underpainting, if there's a color that's really working and, and you like it, there is no reason why you can't continue and keep it. Now, this is a little bit confusing, this little building here, whatever this little shed is, because I used the same colors as the mountain shape, and so it looks like, what happened to that, or the distant trees, they got lower. Uh, that's kind of odd. It just feels really weird. So I need to make some sort of decision about what I'm going to do with this. It's not, I'm going to have to change the color if I'm going to keep it. So let's change the colors here and hint at this little little uh, shed-like building so it's not as confusing. There's a little bit of a light thing up there and remember it's just a collection of shapes and colors how about this you, I don't you, you don't want it to be to stand out like if it's the if it's the area with the highest contrast or the the, the darkest dark and the lightest light which it is right now your eye is going to go right to that area and you don't want that to happen so we're going to have to tone it down one way we can tone it down is just flick it with our finger and then pull some of the foliage over it right so we've got some of this green uh, bushes right in here so we can add a little bit of more, more of it, right? And that's that helps to hide it. The other thing is maybe it's just a little too white. So maybe if we add a little bit of peach to it, it just tones it down a little bit. All right, but I'm not, again, I'm not going to spend hours and hours on it. Uh, it's a good reminder that a lot of times this happens when we're painting and we get super fixated on one area. And it's not, maybe it's not doing what you want it to do. So you just keep struggling with it. And a better uh, choice would be to move on. And then a lot of times what you think was wrong or a struggle ends up not being as bad as you think. I'm adding some of this rusty color to the shadowed side of the roof. And now I need to add some sunlight to the roof on this side so I'm going to use a pale a, just a lighter value of this rusty this peachy color and this is tin roof so it's got some linear texture in there I'm not sure I don't want to get too fussy with it Okay, and I might just come back with the harder pastel and add some of those linear marks. And actually, in, in the photo, you might be saying, well, you know, Karen, I think that actually looks lighter than you have it. And, and that's true, but it may be that it's just a little bit overexposed. So I don't want to make it too light and bright. Again, don't fixate it on any one area, just move on. Because a lot of times, once you move on, you realize, oh, you know what? That's, that doesn't need any more. Alright, so, now I've got the building in place. And again, I don't really want this to be completely only about the building. I, I really, nothing's happening with the flowers. And I really can't see what's going on unless I add more to the flowers. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of that rusty color just to reinforce it. And I'm going to, uh, next I'm going to start adding some of the green. Actually I'm going to give it another quick spray of fixative. What? I showed it already. 
Blair, very low odor, workable, fix it in. I'm going to spray the trees while I'm at it so I can get a little bit more texture in the next layers. We're going to let this dry for just a second. Um, while it's drying, I really want to kind of indicate some of the um, um, wood slats in the building. So I'm just adding some darker blue and I realized that's not dark enough. So it's taking it out of the shadows. So I go back with a with that navy blue that I had and the combination is just what I wanted. Alright, so let's add a little bit of light to some of these bushes. And now I'm going to start to add the distant the distant green. I want to create I want to create depth in this little bit of a sunflower field. So I'm going to start with a dull yellow ochre for the distant sunflowers. And they're smaller, right, because they're in the distance. So I'm going to make a few small, duller a duller yellow. And I'm sticking them up over the the buildings and the trees. Just, there's tons. And I want to mask them. Remember, if to to really paint effective um, fields of flowers, it, if you start by creating large areas of the color of the flowers, and then gradually make them larger and pull out a few of those shapes then that actually helps to make a more effective feeling of depth. Alright, so we're at this stage where I've got a lot of the cooler color yellow flowers um, and as we come forward they get a little bit larger and they get a little bit brighter, more intense. So I'm going to just put a few of those in there's some bigger ones kind of sticking up. And I want to arrange them so that they create this kind of visual pathway through our flowers. I'll come back and add some of this. Then there's some of them that are hidden in the grass. I have to put them in, bef put them in before I add the grass. Okay. Let's add... Now the the flowers are facing in the opposite direction, so I don't, I'm not painting the centers. This is kind of tricky. I'm painting the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. These are not the, the colorful centers that we are used to painting when we paint sunflowers that are looking at us. So I'm doing the back sides of them with a darker green. Now I'm going to come in and put in some of the distant green. I'm using a lighter, duller green and I'm making some horizontal marks and as I come forward I can increase the intensity of that green and I'm going to paint <coughs> some of the larger leaf shapes by pressing harder, shouting, so that you can see these marks. <coughs> Add some warmer yellow greens to get some sunlight on those leaf shapes. When I'm shouting, I've got to hold my board down so that it doesn't bounce. Let's see. <coughs> a little bit more yellow green, a little bit brighter, some of those areas. And now 
Let's add just a very light brush of green on top, just to cover up that Georgia clay. And then a few more leaf shapes in here. I think we need to hide a few more of our yellow flowers. Would you say that we need just a few more? We also need to add a cooler yellow on our star flowers. Those are the, the larger flowers. <clears throat> and you can see when I added that cooler yellow on top of the warmer and more orangey yellow, then all of a sudden they, they really start to come to life. And they really feel like they're catching that sunlight. They're facing the sun and they're really catching some of that sunlight. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my grass box once again. So I think I need to add a little bit of... I mixed up my, a little bit more sunlight to the edge of the tree. And then a little bit more cooler foliage in the shadow side. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my grass box and I'm going to look for some green and I'm going to kind of reinforce some of the stems. We have this, some of these, I like this taller green one sticking up right here. Might have to work on that a little bit more. That got, that got a little sloppy. So I'm adding some stems, some little bit of grasses. Again, the most detail is going to be in the foreground. All right. So here, if I if I just were to take a quick look, we we were struggling with this area, right? I mean, it's supposed to be some sort of outcropping or outbuilding. But it's confusing. It looks like the sky. It looks like the building shape is awkward. And so, <clears throat> because I'm an artist and not a camera, and I have an artistic license, I can choose how I want to portray this area. And I think that it's just a little bit confusing with that building. So I'm going to just continue to, I'm going to make that the roof the building in the shadows. I'm going to totally eliminate that um, awkward shape. And then this is the distant tree line. And we'll just add a little bit more of the bushes over in this area. And I think that's a better resolution for this area. Because that little outbuilding was not reading really well. No matter what I was doing to it, it was, eh, what's, what is that? I don't know what that is. That's, that is not very interesting. So, really, when in doubt, if something's not working, take it out. No one says you have to have it in there um, if it's not working, just because it's in your photo. I'm going to add a little bit more light to some of these. By light, I mean a uh, more of a lemony yellow, just to contrast with the warmer yellow, just to really help those glow. And I think I need another guy right up there. That really, that uh, bright area against the dark helps make it really stand out. The other area that seems a little bit uh, confusing is um, where the tree trunk is. There's a really, I don't know if I can pull this off, I have the right color for it. can't be too dark, it can't be too light. Okay, you see that there's a little um, sunflower kind of decor on the side of the building. And I think if I can just hint at some of this stuff, it'll just make it a little more interesting. There's also some writing back there. Um, I could do a little scribbling to indicate some of that and a little bit of uh, 
window just to give it a little bit more detail. All right, I think I've done enough to where you can get the idea. I could certainly bring the, I could add more detail. I could clarify some areas. This is really, uh, this painting is at the stage where if I keep working without thinking about what I'm trying to do, I'm going to overwork it. Uh, although I could add a little, a few more harder edges um, and really refine some of the areas, but I don't know what I need to do until I stop and step away from it. So it's a good time for me to step away from it. If I do any more to it, I'm going to certainly share uh, what I do in the description of this video. But I hope you've enjoyed it. The whole idea of turning your your photo upside down. I know it seems so simple and I know many of you have probably done it, but if you haven't done it or you haven't done it in a long time, try it for your next painting and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So I hope you've enjoyed this demo and I'll see you next time.